So, hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. Finally! It's been about two weeks since I last recorded something, and... Ah... Uh, like, this is not the last time this is gonna happen. Exams happened, and they happened all at the same time, and I had no time for anything. Uh, but for the next month or so, I am done. Uh, before the exams return. So now I have time to finally do what I wanted to do, which is participate in Cheap Ass Chips with the HD6850, a competition that has long since started since I made the last video about it, but now I can finally do something with it. So, this right here is still my single HD6850, and I was thinking about just running it today, uh, I did do um, pre-testing with this, like if it works sub zero, fine, and I already got some pretty, pretty good scores with it. So I was thinking, do I just rerun it today and just get those scores proper so that they like count towards the competition? Because I can't just submit something I did in pre-testing before the comp started. Um, but I thought, uh, nah, I'm gonna mod it. So. I, I already did my scope shots of what the card looks like on all the main power rails in stock configuration. Um, and I'm gonna right now mod the card, uh, specifically cap mod the card, because uh, it's, it's been volt modded. This is the uh, volt modding. This plugs into an Elmer EVC2 for volt modding. And I also have these on the back. Uh, these are for measuring. Uh, with the oscilloscope. So this is core, this is VDDCI, and this is memory. Uh, and I, you know, took a scope shot of uh, all three of uh, what the card looks like in its unmodded state right now. And I'm gonna take more when the card is proper modded. So yeah, basically what's gonna happen is I will upgrade the output filtering, I will upgrade the input filtering. I'm also gonna upgrade the output filter for core, uh, uh, for memory and VDDCI. And yeah, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna have to do something here with the unused part. Uh, I'll I'll figure something out. It might not look the best, but my plan is to absolutely load this thing with capacitors, similar to how I did my GTX 1060. Um, not that the card really needs it. The scope shots I just took. The VPP on. All of the rails is below 200 millivolts, which I've been told is like the sort of area at which point, like, you need a lot of capacitors to really change anything. If you have more than 200 millivolts peak to peak, then it's usually pretty easy to get improvement from a cap mod. But since all of these, like, especially VDDCI, VDDCI only has 30 millivolts peak to peak. Like, the memory control on this is apparently pretty low power, I guess. Or maybe it just has, like, a lot of the multi-layer ceramics behind the core are actually VDDCI. It's only the ones in, like, sort of this area that are actually V-core, so maybe that they just have a lot of multi-layer ceramics. Um, memory has uh, around 120 millivolts peak-to-peak, -peak, and core has around 185. So core, obviously, is, is where we can improve the most, but, like, it's 185 millivolts peak to peak with only like five capacitors for bulk filtering in stock configuration. Even if I triple the amount of capacitors, I like 150 millivolts peak to peak, maybe we'll get there. Um, so it's not like this is gonna have massive improvements like some Nvidia cards. I'm still gonna do it because this is cheap ass chips and I um, like. I still have this, so this is my lifetime supply of 820 microfarad capacitors, and I will use them all at some point. And yeah, then uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna use some harvested 16 volt input filtering caps, maybe stack some multi light ceramics behind the core, but uh, now I'm probably gonna do it on the memory chips. I don't really want to touch the core right now because it usually goes wrong. Um, and yeah, and then the last mod that I've already done to the card is this right here, this resistor. This is, I think, a 10 kilo ohm resistor. And this uh, makes the card run in PCI Express 2.0. So 
I will probably, if people want it, make a dedicated video about this, but you can find the full explanation uh, on the HWBot Discord in the AMD GPU channel, it's pinned there. Um, so what you need to do in order to get these older cards running at PCI Express 2.0 instead of 1.1 is you need to pull the, I think it's GPIO3 is what the pin is called. You need to pull that to 3.3 volts through a 10 kilo ohm resistor. And on most cards, uh, actually on, on all cards that have a crossfire connector, the pin is should be this pin right here, like the second pin from the right on the back side. Um, and then you follow a trace and that leads to like an empty pad. And then there's this empty switch pad on a bunch of cards where one of these pads is connected to 3.3 volts, which you get from down here on the PCI Express slot. And you just place a 10 kilo ohm resistor between that, and that pulls the GPIO pin high, and that forces the card into uh, PCI Express 2.0 speeds. Now, you don't have this 3.3 volt pad on every card. For example, my HD5770 doesn't have it. There you need to find an, a different place to get your 3.3 volts from. But on uh, on my 6850, and I guess on most other 6850s too, then uh, this is just right next to each other, so it's like literally just like that. Um, so yeah, if you want a more detailed description for how this mod works, uh, look up the HWBot Discord and go to the AMD GPU channel and look at the pinned messages. Uh, and yeah, so that's all the mods it already has. Uh, and yeah, I'm a... Uh, I'm gonna put a bunch of these onto the card now <laughs> and uh, just see what it does. Like, I plan to e power this card in the end. It's probably not gonna need it. I will do it, like, just because. So, uh, yeah, let's just get started with modding this thing, and then if we'll have enough time, that will be another video. But if I have enough time, I will also run the card right away, sub zero, because. Well, there, there's, there are different stages in cheap ass chips, but they're like different benchmarks and not different cooling stages like we had for the 260 comp, so there's not really a point in doing air cooling and then water cooling first. I'm just gonna go straight to Sub-Zero because, because I've done enough pre-testing with this to know how it works, so I'm going straight to Sub-Zero, at least for Fire Strike. And yeah, without any further ado, uh, let's just start modding this thing. So yeah, uh, I guess there's gonna be a time lapse now.
All right, I am now done with modding the card, and uh, well, on the front, nothing has really changed, but the back now has quite a lot of extra capacitors on it. So, we have four 16 volt, 270 microfarad capacitor on the input side of vCore. We have another two 270 microfarad, 16 volt capacitors on the other side for uh, memory and VDDCI. Um, and then just we have a 2.5 volt, 820 microfarad capacitor for every capacitor that was present on memory and VDDCI output as well as one uh, for everyone on vCore, plus the two unpopulated spots, so that's another, that's like a seven extra, so that's more than double on vCore. And I also, this is, uh, this sketches me out slightly, but I'm okay with it for now. Uh, these are 1200 microfarad, 12, uh, 2.5 volt capacitors, and I've put them onto uh, vCore motorized ceramic capacitors directly behind the core. Now this is, this is really bad, like if, if anything touches this, just even slightly, I can very easily break off the motorized ceramic that's behind the core and potentially also damage some traces, which could kill the card. That, that's bad, <laughs> that's really bad. But this is based off uh, some findings I had with my 5770 that showed that just a few capacitors behind the core actually had a bigger impact than a whole bunch of them on the output. So. Yeah, uh, having multi-last ceramics here would probably have been better, but I didn't want to solder multi-last ceramics right now. That's also why the memory didn't get anything yet. That's going to be done later. For now, I just want to do the, the big, easy bulk capacitors. And yeah, so I, I just want to have these behind the core because like there's, there's a fair number of multi-last ceramics behind the core already. So I just wanted to have a big reservoir of capacitance directly behind the core to hopefully do quite a lot. Now these these have higher capacitance than than these ones. Uh, they also, but they have like slightly worse ESR and probably ESL, so not that great. But they they sure have a lot of capacitance. So my idea is that if I can't fit a lot of these, I'm just gonna use like super high capacitance and hope that they just do something. So yeah, that's that's the mods for now. So <laughs> quite a lot of stuff. So I will put the um, I will put the stock heat sink back on now and take my scope shots and then I'm gonna put the entire t uh, thing uh, sub zero and see what I can get in terms of scores. Okay, so there's a bit of an update to the cap modding situation with this card, as you can probably see. The three 1200 uh, microfarad caps from directly behind the core are gone. And you may also see how some of these caps now look slightly different. That's because pretty much all of them, uh, all the output ones, uh, have since been removed and reattached because the card was misbehaving. So, uh, part of that misbehavior was Sapphire Tricks trying to set my vCore to 1.3 volts in software, which doesn't work on this card and just crashes it. The other part was that there actually is a thing such as too many capacitors. In the case of this card, that number of capacitors being 10 attached to its vCore rail. So, these seven capacitors right here, these are perfectly fine, but the three additional ones I had to directly behind the core, the higher capacitance ones, well, it seems that having all of those capacitors on the card and starting a load on it actually makes the capacitors when they charge pull enough current to shut the card down and trip its over current protection because that's exactly what was happening. I would uh, boot the card, everything's fine, and then I start a load. Just GPUZ render test is enough and every VRM on this thing would just shut down. Now, that pretty much, like if you have a card that shuts down all of its VRMs without there being a short circuit anywhere, that, that pretty much always is some sort of protection mechanism being tripped. It's either over current protection, over temperature protection, uh, sometimes short circuit protection, but that's more just also like over current protection. Uh, anyway, so this thing was shutting down. And 
I was for a while I was very confused because I just did a cap mod why would the card now be shutting down I, I, I don't get this because this is not I do not think that this is a lot of caps I, I've attached far more caps than this to a card like I have that GTX 1060 which has I think twice as many output caps on it and it has a very similar VRM to this card and that 1060 just doesn't care but after doing some testing involving removing pretty much all the output capacitors I put on this thing and putting them back yes it does actually seem that I can't attach any more capacitance to the VCAR rail at least not bulk capacitance I might be able to put some motorized ceramics behind the core at some point but any more bulk capacitance and this thing will shut down <laughs> which is interesting um, because I like I knew this is a thing I, I think Bullseye had a card where this happened to him. Now I have a card where it happened to me. Um, so I, I always knew that this could be a thing, but I never thought I, it would trip this early. Like, I was originally thinking to like, be, because like these two caps, the upper ones, um, they just sit on empty pads. They don't actually piggyback off the legs sticking through from the other side. On, on the front side, these two points are empty. I originally planned to fill those in. If I had done that, then this card might still not work in this state. So like, and, and, and I could like attach capacitors to the output leg of the inductor and then bridge over to ground somewhere. I still have options for more capacitors here and I can't do that apparently. Now the card probably doesn't need it. I have done my scope shots now um, and it is actually pretty good now. Like it was pretty good to start with but, um, yeah, so uh, when it comes to VCore VRM, in stock configuration, this thing was undershooting by 80 millivolts. Now it's undershooting by 60 millivolts. So that's 20 millivolts less undershoot. That's cool. The VPP also went down from 185 millivolts to 145 millivolts, which pretty much spot on the 150 millivolts peak to peak optimum that I expected. Now memory and VDDCI did not improve an undershoot, at least not at the kind of resolution that my oscilloscope operates at. It has a 10 millivolt resolution, so changes in the undershoot smaller than uh, 5 millivolts, because 5 millivolts is where it rounds up to 10. Um, it does not detect, and as far as the oscilloscope is concerned, the minimums on memory and VDDCI are the same. However, VPP also came down uh, from 115 on memory down to 95.2, I think, or 97.2. And VPP on VDDCI went down from 30 to 23.7 or something like that. So it, it got better. Not that it does much. Like, memory and... Well, memory had a... Yeah, like, the VPP was kind of high, but... Like, uh, the, the undershoot, the, this this undershoots by 50 millivolts, this one had an undershoot of 10 millivolts. Th that's like, perfectly fine, I, you don't really need to improve any of this. But, uh, yeah, um, one thing that I also can say is that the input capacitors I put on, these actually did something. Because while I was testing around with the card without pretty much like, um, when I was going like, why is it shutting down, when I like, thought, okay, it might be hitting over current protection from the inrush current of the capacitor, so I removed all the output ones. That's when the card worked again, uh, and I, I just, while testing, just sort of had the oscilloscope hooked up to it, and just with these, with like basically, I think I left the these two that are on the anti pads on, but everything else went off the card. Uh, so just with these two caps, and then the input caps, this already went down to like 155, 160 peak to peak on vCore. Uh, and I I don't remember what, what undershoot was like, but like from 185 to like 160, that's already that's already a decent improvement. Um, and I don't think that these two output caps did that much because like input, yeah. So input cap modding actually quite like again the 106 they had it absolutely loved input capacitors. And ever since then, when I can, I always put input caps on the ca on the card as well. Um, and it seems that in this case, yeah, it does actually help. Um, at least a little bit. Like, I don't know how much of that was this, or like, these two. But I don't think that these two alone would uh, do that much. 
Um, but yeah, so that's uh, cap modding this card. So yeah, uh, we're pretty much done with that. I was originally planning to like run the card and show it to you how it's running, but I think the video is already long enough as is. Uh, like, there's gonna be a video anyway of this thing running, Sub-Zero. Um, I just wanted to mod it first. Uh, I think I'm gonna Sub-Zero it this way. Like, there might still be more mods. I do eventually plan to e-power this. Um, but yeah, I, I think I'm gonna run it Sub-Zero like this. And there will be a video about that, so if you wanna see that card running, just like wait one or two days until I upload that. And then you can see it running as well. So. Yeah, that would be it with the uh, HD6, H50 cap modding round number one. So yeah, it caused a few issues, but uh, now it works just fine, and what I see on the oscilloscope I like. And yeah, so if you're also running a 6850 now, you know that you could potentially be running into uh, problems with uh, too many capacitors, so now you know that that's an issue. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, yeah, until next time, goodbye.